Dear brothers and sisters, our young guests, الصالحات الحمد لله الذي قدر كل ما هو آت وكل ما هو فات نسأله عز وجل مجيبات رحمته نسأله الفوز بالجنة والنجاة من النار I bear witness there is no deity save God Allah and Muhammad is his servant and his messenger and his mercy to all mankind we pray to him to shower his mercy and his blessings upon all the prophets and upon a prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon all of them. Dear brothers and sisters, our young guests and their teachers, I'd like to salute you with the salute of Islam. Assalamu alaikum, may peace be upon all of you. As you know, in a couple of weeks, more or less, about 1.8 billion Muslims will commemorate the birth of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And as we all know, he has been he is and he will remain to be a source of influence and guidance for these, for the community. And I believe, as you will see later on, and also for others as well. And one thing I'd like to start for our guests who really probably they've heard of his name, Muhammad. But you will, you, will, you will know that he, his name is one of the, if not the most uttered name in the world. As you heard today, the Adan, he mentioned him. The call to prayer, we call it the Adan, when you call to prayer. So you bear witness that God is one and you bear witness at Muhammad, see you mentioned his name. When you are, when we will be praying, or when we are praying, also we salute him in our prayers. You will find his name is the most popular name in this, in Muslims. I don't think that any name is used more than Muhammad. And I'm not too sure if you'll find anyone who's been studied, researched, investigated his life, more than his life, more than Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So for our young guests and for those who brought them and a reminder to all of us, he is the most, no, no, he is the only most, you, you will find that if someone attacks Muslims, or they attack Muhammad by name. You will never, never, never find a Muslim response by attacking Moses or Jesus or anyone else. Because this man, Muhammad وسلم, and his book taught us that from the time of Adam to Noah, to Abraham, to Moses, to Jesus, to Muhammad, and all in between, these are apostles those who are apostles and messengers of God, we revere them and we love them, and they are also a source of, of inspiration. So I just wanted to start with that, a, a, a quick introduction. 
for our young guests who we are talking about. We are talking about the Prophet of Islam called Muhammad. <coughs> now, when we look at in the past, in the Middle Ages, he wasn't regarded in a positive way. He was regarded in a negative way. And that's not the khutbah is going to be up, it's just very brief. During the Middle Ages, the Prophet was regarded as, you know, a, a fake. Not necessarily, they called him the false prophet. And I am not going to, I think Karen Armstrong, the historian who wrote a book about Muhammad, she dedicated a lot of pages that can help us to see the negativity that was our prophet portrayed back then. And I think if you, you know, when you read her, her book, or they're not only, not only hers, many others, but if you read it, you realize you can't say it is, it is impossible for that negativity not to have impacted the Western society. And that's why sometimes I think we can say, which as, as you will see, lately things have changed, but for a long time they kept the, the, the image of our prophet that we love and we revere and we respect and we believe he is the best man was sent to humanity. It wasn't the case in the Middle Ages, not until about two, three hundred, few centuries ago, uh, but for the longest time it was always portrayed in a negative and uh, a, 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 uh, in a very negative way. However, if you look at our history, you'll find the history evolved. And I believe, as uh, a, 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 uh, one of the historians who is not a friend of Islam or someone who is a fan of our Prophet Muhammad, who declared after he studied, and he was very skeptical about religion at large, not just Islam, but religion at large, but especially Islam. Um, he said that Muhammad was born into the light of history. What does that mean? It means, brothers and sisters, that anything, if you want to look at our Prophet beyond the Quran and beyond what the Muslims claim, there is a plenty of evidence, historical evidence, non-religious historical evidence that can attest that he did exist and there is a man called Muhammad who did all the things that we know, whether it's negative or positive, but people cannot declare or cannot claim that this is a false prophet or, or didn't exist as a man. They could, they could declare him as a false prophet, but didn't exist as a man. So you will find that also in a very important document. And I'll, I'll, I'll share with you briefly the name of the, of the gentleman. Um, well, I'll find his name later on. Uh, but nonetheless, what I'm going to share with you, there's a transformation from the Middle Ages, and they influenced so many people after. And by the way, the gentleman, his name, he's a French historian of human civilization. His name is Ernest Renan. And the Encyclopedia Britannica 2008 version wrote, Muhammad is the only founder of a major world religion who lived in the full light of history. This is, again, I am quoting non-Muslims, and you will find throughout my beginning of the khutbah, I'm quoting non-Muslims. So, alhamdulillah, we, we praise God that in recently there are many non-Muslims who start, started really seeing the Prophet, who he is, what he has done to humanity, what he had brought to human civilization, and really they started to be more just toward him. And I'm going to quote briefly a few of these individuals. If you go, those who are interested for our young men and women, all you have to do is go to Google and say non-Muslims who really spoke about Muhammad, and you'll, you'll find them by, 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 by the 10th. But I'm going to quote a few. One is Michael H. Hart, which we all probably read his book. If not, please do read it. The, the 100 Most Influential People of All Time. 
He ranked the Prophet Muhammad as the most influential man in the human history. The most. You know, others might say he is among the most influential. This man, this historian said, no, he is the most influential. And he set his criteria and so on and so forth for those one who are interested. Thomas Carlyle, he's a Nobel Prize winner from, he's a Scottish, Scottish philosopher. He said, I'm quoting now, it is a great shame for anyone to listen to the accusation that Islam is a lie and that Muhammad was a fabricator, fabricator and a deceiver. We saw, and he listed, I, I won't go through it, but just a brief. He said, he remained steadfast upon his principles with firm determination. He is a kind, generous, compassionate, pious, virtuous, with a real manhood, hardworking, and sincere. It's a long list. I won't go through that. Another individual, J. H. Denison, in his book, Emotions as the Basis of Civilization. Again, it's long. But what is very important, he said in the 5th and 6th centuries, the civilized world stood on the verge of chaos. The old emotional cultures that had made civilization possible since they had given to man a sense of unity and of reverence for their rules had broken down and nothing had been found adequate to take their place. I'll skip civilization like a gigantic tree whose foliage had overreached the world, stood tottering, rotted to the core, was there any emotional culture that could be brought in to gather mankind once more to unity and to save civilization? To save civilization. And this is a non-Muslim. It was among the Arabs that the man was born who was to unite the whole known world of the East and the South. Another individual, I, I can go on and on. The last one, Lamartine, he's a you know, history of Turkey, he's a French historian. And he's a philosopher, orator, apostle, legislator, warrior. Talk about the prophet, conqueror of ideas, restorer of rational dogma, continue. And then he says, as regards all standards by which human greatness may be measured, we may ask, is there any man greater than he? He's asking about the prophet. And I think, I think you, you can see, and there are many, many more. And the good news, brothers and sisters, and I think... We, we, number one, we salute these objective um, people of reason, people of justice, who really looked at this man and looked at the history and the record, not, okay, these are non-Muslims, and they really concluded what you heard, and there are many more like them. So for us, it is an interesting time I, I rather live in this time than live at a time where he was completely considered what, what, what you heard in a negative way. So alhamdulillah, we praise God that there are so many good, logical, fair, and just individuals who are prominent in, and they're very accomplished. They were able to help our brothers and sisters in, a human, in humanity at large uh, outside the, the, the Muslim community to see our prophet, which the, the, the community and the world will be commemorating his birth in, 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 in a short time. With that introduction, now let me jump into what I wanted to remind us of. Why? Why do we revere him? Is it just because he brought the Quran and this? No. We really revere him or we love him because what he has brought to humanity. And there is a, a, a scholar by the name of Abdul Qayyim. I have always been fascinated. Everybody quote him. Everybody have been fascinated by this powerful vision of this man when he summarized Islam and the message of Muhammad وسلم, on four things. He said, Islam is the religion of wisdom, justice, mercy, and what good what, what is good for humanity. He said, this is Islam. And if anyone tells you anything that violates justice, it's injustice, foolishness, violate wisdom, that is harmful to humanity, that is cruel against mercy and compassion, no matter which verse they give you or which hadith they give you, this is not Islam. 
So this is the religion that these people were talking about, and this is why we, are, we, we love him and we revere him, and we embrace his message wholeheartedly because of what brought to humanity and what brings to us in, in each hour, what brings to our daily life. So what I want to do today, I would like to take a peek at one aspect of his character. At a time where our nation and the world is struggling with racism. And I don't need to really talk about our own nation with white nationalism and it's becoming a threat to our, uh, to our great nation. And now we know the politicians now are trying to address and to realize it is a real threat to our fabric. There is a historian by the name of, his last name is Arnold Toynbee. He's a British historian, philosopher of history, who in the mid of 20th century, he had an observation. He said that the world, he is the man who studied many human civilizations, and he studied their rise and their demise. What really help a civilization's rise to be at the top, and what are the things that happen for it to, for its demise. He saw the future and he said, I worry about the human civilization for three things. Racism, unfortunately, this about 60, 70 years ago, and we, we can see it now throughout the world, racism. He said, alcohol and drugs, it's unfortunate, I believe that he's correct on this one here. And, and he said the, the disintegration of a family. The focus is on racism. And he said, after studying many civilizations, he believes that Islam can bring the anecdote, the solution, the medicine for racism. That's a non-Muslim. 60, 70 years ago, who studied many human civilizations. So let us look at the prophet. How, what did he do to racism? What did he do? Because of time, I don't have that luxury to quote you many, many verses in the Quran that came to remind us of the oneness of humanity, that we are all equal in the sight of our creator, and it doesn't matter of your race, of your color, and all these things that we know, it doesn't exist. It, I mean, it exists, but it is not in the sight of our Creator. What is, what is accepted by God Almighty is those one who do good. Who are God conscious and they do good, as simply as that. So irrespect of who you are, your background, you're rich, you're poor, you're man, you're woman, you're black, you're white, it doesn't matter. And I think Malcolm X was impressed when he went to, to Hajj and he saw that. Because sometimes, you know, when, when you read the Quran or you read... A, 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 a source of thoughts, a lot of times abstract are easy. These are great, lofty claims and principles that are uh, beautiful to listen, but are they put on the ground, have been exemplified, have become real? That is the challenge. That is the test. So Malcolm X went over there and, you know, he was raised that, uh, uh, you know, before he converted to the mainstream Islam that, you know, God uh, uh, only for the black and the white is, uh, is, is the devil and all the things that we know about. And he goes to Hajj and he goes to the pilgrimage in Mecca and he finds the, the blue eyes and the black and the white and the old and the young and the rich and the poor. He realized that all of them, they are looked equal as they are worshiping the one God. So this is what the prophet has done. You know, the Quran is rich and usually, not usually, Abrahamic faith, monotheism, whether Christianity, Judaism, and, and, and Islam, they all promote <coughs> equality, brothers and sisters. This is monotheism. This is the Abrahamic family, Abrahamic faith. So let us see how the prophet, this unique man, this great man, how did he exemplify these beautiful principles in real life? You know, when you walk in through the door, it doesn't matter your color. 
you will never find in the history of Islam that there was a mosque for black people or a mosque for white people or a mosque for only Pakistanis or the mosque only that means you cannot come in. No, probably the leadership might be Pakistanis, but it is open for all. So when the Prophet, what he has done, made sure that the place of worship where you connect with one God, it is, it is colorless, raceless, genderless. Everybody can come in and connect with God equally. You find a lot of times you walk in, into a mosque and you don't know who's leading the prayer. It could be black, it could be rich, it could be poor, it could be young. Sometimes I've seen people at nine years old leading the prayer. The, qual the, the qualification is not who you are, your position. Sometimes you'll find presidents and governments in the line praying behind someone else. Could be a plumber, could be, you know, of course, a plumber and all of these are great skill that they have, but unfortunately sometimes the, the, the society looks down at this and, and I think honestly it's stupid. But the point is, when you are worshiping God, whether you are in a mosque or you go to Hajj, it doesn't matter who you are in sight of our Creator, you are the same. When the Prophet came to Medina and he has established the, the, the center government and he has picked a black man called Bilal to announce the prayers. You wonder why, when, and by the time, uh, I mean, Arabs at that time, very high on race, and black is the third or the fourth uh, level in the society. And he chose Bilal, a black man, to call the prayer. In other words, he's saying that there's a new world order. This religion comes to erase all the barriers that have been erected by human beings when it comes to racism or sexism, whatever ism is out there. It is the human made, and the Quran went as far as to say this is a satanic. Racism is a satanic thing. It is, it is something evil. The Prophet, they were Bilal, he's a black man, and there is Suhaib, the Roman, and you have Salman the Persian, and many people like them, who were, some of them were slaves, some of them were, were third and fourth class, and he said, all of them, minna al bayt all of them, they belong to my family. Can you imagine the honor that they will receive? Another word is, it's another word order, no racism in this faith. And there are many events when some of the companions, they couldn't rid themselves of racism and they got angry of a black man or a slave and they called them, oh, you black man or you this or this and we know the Prophet was outraged because it is against the fabric of Islam and it is against this new world order that it came to change the world from the chaos and racism to more the leveling the ground of equality. So this is, brothers and sisters, to our guests and to all of us, as a reminder, this is the man who, I'm not saying that Muslims were perfect. Muslims are human beings. They made mistakes. But what is empowering when you know that you have the book, has it been altered, and this image, this character of our beloved Prophet remains a vibrant light that keep on touching us and keep on reminding us. So when we slip and we act in a racist way, we remind that this is not what the Quran for and this is not the mother of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Udu'ullah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah ladhi kataba ala nafsi al-rahma wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahda wa la sharika lah. وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم Dear brothers and sisters As you heard in the first khutbah Our prophet has and is and will always be a beacon of light that when you are looking 
as you look closer to him, for sure he can transform us. So I invite myself and you to read more about him, to reflect on this great, unique, unmatched man that God Almighty has blessed us with. And I pray at a time where our nation is struggling with racism, with all the ism that we know, I pray that we can be that, that agent who first exemplify this teaching, second, because of our conduct, because of our behavior, we will be able to transmit this beautiful teaching to our nation, hoping, inshallah, as when the Quran told them, Rahmatan al-Alameen, that you are sent to humanity, we will be that agent that can, can, that can pass and help our nation uh, transform and rid itself of racism and all the illnesses that can disintegrate our civilization and our great nation. Let us pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify our hearts, to strengthen our faith, to help us to see the light of the Quran and the mother of Muhammad of who they ought to be in our lives. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this special and important day to rid our hearts from any racism. To guide us and to help us to rid our acts and our thoughts from any racism. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us to be the agent of goodness and the agent of righteousness. The, the Prophet will be proud of us in the hereafter.